So today, let's prove the idea that a fractional exponent, namely x to the a over b power, can translate to the b root of x to the a power. Now, you might have been doing this for a long time now. You might know this principle from previous classes. Um, is it true though, or is this just arbitrarily defined? No, we can actually derive this from principles we've already proven and established. So let's do that. Let's prove that this is an acceptable translation. So to start, and starting a proof is always probably the hardest place to be at um, because the right starting position really helps. So it takes a little bit of cleverness perhaps, but the starting place should really be in here. We want to remove this fraction with just like something that we understand very well, like a singular constant, and then try to work our way to, tr to prove that that constant should logically be a fraction rather than just an integer, for example. So let's start by actually saying that x to the c power equals the b root of x to the a power. Now it would be nice to get rid of this radical um, because the radical is what is throwing off our problem here. Is a radical actually true? So can we get rid of this but maintain the truth of these, this statement the entire time? So the way to get rid of a radical you probably already know. If we're taking the b root of something, like b root xa, well then if we just raise all of this to the b power, it will cancel out the rooting operation. So set this equal and bring down x to the c power. But now we need to raise it also to the b power to maintain equivalency. Now, by the power rule of monomials, we know that we can just multiply these exponents together to simplify this expression, x to the cb power. And the right side of this equation just simplifies to x to the a power, and we set them equal. Well, now we know x to the cb power should equal x to the a power. So really, if, these if this statement's going to be true, cb has to equal a. We could also use logarithms to justify this, but maybe we've not talked about logs yet. So we'll avoid that, but it still logically holds that CB has to be equal A for this statement to be true. So CB equals A. So if CB equals A, it would be nice to get an expression particularly for C because our original expression had the power of C. So what must the power of C be given this statement of C B equals A? Well, it might be obvious, but let's just do a little algebra to conclude. Let's divide both sides by B. When we do that, we hold equivalency, but the B's on this side will cancel each other, and we are left with C must be equal to a fraction namely a divided by b. Great for us that both a and b are here because they are in our original expression for the radical, the b index and the a power. And so just to conclude, we can insert all of this back into our original expression. We can conclude that the b root of x to the a power equals x to the c, which also equals x to the a over b power. And so we can conclude by just redacting the middle of this equation and linking the two ends together that the b root of x to the a power is equal to x to the a over b power. And so we have proven the general case of radicals transforming into fractional exponents.